In this video, we're going to look at the double angle formulas. So we can derive the double angle formulas, so sine 2a, cos 2a, and tan 2a, from the addition formulas that were given in the formula book. So if we have sine a plus a, cos a plus a, and tan a plus a, we create these new formulas, which are called the double angle formulas. So we're going to use the sine plus formula, which is sine a plus b equals sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. And what we're going to do is we're going to change b to a as well. So that will give us sine a plus a is sine a cos a plus cos a sine a. So we've got sine a plus a, which is sine 2a. So there's our double angle formula. And here we've got sine a times cos a and another sine a times cos a. So we've actually got two sine a cos a's. So there's the double angle formula, which is a really useful formula. So cos 2a this time. So again, we're going to start with cos a plus b. So cos a plus b is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And again, we're going to change the b's to a's. So we've got cos a plus a is cos a cos a minus sine a sine a. So cos 2a is cos squared a minus sine squared a. And we can use this formula to actually generate two different formulas. So if we use sine squared a plus cos squared a equals one, we can eliminate cos squared a by substituting in or eliminate sine squared a by substituting in one minus cos squared a and we can eliminate cos squared a by substituting in 1 minus sine squared a. So if I eliminated cos first, so I'll have 1 minus sine squared a minus another sine squared a, I have 1 minus 2 sine squared a's. So there's another version of the formula. And again, I could use the top formula and eliminate sine instead. So cos squared a minus, and then in brackets, because it's minus all of it, 1 minus cos squared a. That gives me cos squared a minus 1 plus cos squared a, because minus minus, taking away a negative adds it, which is 2 cos squared a's minus 1. So there's actually three different formulas for cos 2a. So we could have cos squared a minus sine squared a. We could have 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Or we could have 2 cos squared a minus 1. It's useful to remember them, uh, but if you don't, you can always derive them again. You can always go through this process again, but it will save time if you remembered these formulas. And finally, we've got tan to a, so we're going to have tan a plus b to start with, which is tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b and we're going to change the b's to a's so tan a plus a 
is 10a plus 10a over 1 minus 10a 10a. So that leaves us with 10 2a is equal to 2 10a's over 1 minus 10 squared a. And there's the double angle formula for 10. So now we're going to look at using these double angle formulas to solve an equation. I have listed the double angle formulas down here. It would be useful to remember them, so you don't have to derive them every time. But if you do forget them, you can always derive them again by changing the addition formulas which we're given into A plus A. So here we've got sine 3 sine 2x equals 2 sine x. So we won't be able to solve the equation with a 2x and an x. So we need to get everything in terms of the same angle. So we're going to get rid of sine 2x by changing it into 2 sine x cos x. So let's do that now. So 2 sine x cos x equals 2 sine x. So that gives us 6 sine x cos x equals 2 sine x. So don't be tempted now to divide through by sine x. We'll lose answers if we do that. We're going to take it away, make it equal to 0, and then factorise. So we could divide by 2 at this stage, so we'll do that. So 3 sine x cos x equals sine x. And then we're going to take away sine x from both sides. 3 sine x cos x minus sine x equals 0. We're going to factorise out sine x. So sine x on the outside, 3 cos x minus 1 on the inside. So we're going to get either sine x equals 0 or the inside the bracket equals 0. So either sine x is equal to 0 or cos x equals 1 third. So we're going to solve, we're going to shift sine and shift cos, make sure we're in radians because we need, need our answers between 0 and 2 pi. So shift sine 0, that should give us 0. Shift sine 0 equals 0. 180 or pi minus the answer because it's sine gives us pi. And we're also going to want the next answer, which will be 2 pi. So that's where the sine graph crosses the x-axis when sine x equals 0. So 0 pi and 2 pi. And we're going to shift cos 1 third. That gives us 1.23 if we did two decimal places. And we're going to do 2 pi minus the answer because it's cos. And we get 5.0. Five. So there we have our answers. Okay, here's a question involving tan 2x. So again, we want to solve the equation. We're going to get rid of the double angle. So we're going to get rid of tan 2x. And we'll do that by changing it to 2 tan x over 1 minus 10 squared x. So that will give us, I put in a big bracket to start with, 2 10 x over 1 minus 10 squared x times another 10 x equals 1. Let's rewrite it as the whole top times together. So that will give us 6 10 squared x over 1 minus 10 squared x equals 1. So we just times in the tops of the fractions, times in the bottoms of the fractions, and that simplifies it a bit. 
we'll multiply both sides by 1 minus 10 squared x, which gives us 1 minus 10 squared x on the right side, plus the 10 squared x to both sides. So 7 10 squared x equals 1. Then we'll divide by 7. 10 squared x is 1 seventh. And we'll square root. So 10x is plus or minus the square root of 1 seventh. So we're going to have either 10x equals the positive square root of 1 seventh or 10x equals a negative square root of 1 seventh. So we're going to shift 10 them both. So shift 10, the positive square root of 1 seventh. Um, two decimal places again. We're getting 0 0.36. If we add 1 pi on to get the next answer, that's 3.50. So do the same thing with the negative square root. So shift tan the negative square root of one seventh. So we've got minus 0 0.36. If we add pi on to get the next answer, 2.78, and add pi on again because we need our answers between 0 and 2 pi. 5.92. So those four answers are the ones we want because they're between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, another different example. Uh, we've got solve cos 2x equals 11 cos x plus 6 equals 0. So we want to get rid of cos 2x and we can see here there's three different formulas that we could use to get rid of it. So we don't want to add a sine to the question. We don't want a sine squared x involved because we wouldn't be able to solve it. So if we just had it in terms of cos, so if we change cos to a cos 2x to 2 cos squared x minus 1, we'll get a quadratic. So let's go for that. 2 cos squared x minus 1 plus 11 cos x plus 6 equals 0. So collecting like terms, we've got 2 cos squared x plus 11 cos x plus 5 equals 0. So we've got a quadratic, which we can factorize or use the formula. Uh, this one will factorize, so we'll do that. So we have 2 cos x and cos x. The only thing that multiplies to make 5 is 5, so we can have 5 and 1 plus 10 plus 1 gives us 11. So that's either cos x equals minus a half or cos x equals minus 5. So we shift cos, shift cos minus a half, And we get 2 thirds pi. And it's cos, so we do 2 pi minus answer. And we get 4 thirds pi. Now if we shift cos negative 5, we get no solutions. Because cos goes between negative 1 and positive 1. So we've got two answers, and there they are.